All right. Hey, how's it going, everybody? Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Hello. Uh, my name's Eric, and this is I'm go online by Eric Volgaris. And this is Once Upon a Game, uh, a storytelling variety show where we feature a lot of indie RPGs. Um, normally, we do a lot of like GMless games and Brubless games, but this time we're uh, we're doing a special little Sunday edition here of Jason Morningstar's Night Witches. Uh, for those who don't know. Uh, Night Witches is a game about World War II Soviet era airwomen who flew like basically 1928 crop duster airplanes in the middle of the night and dropped bombs on the invading Germans. Um, they got dealt probably like one of the worst hands in terms of just dealing with sexism, uh, dealing with just being in Russia in World War II, <laughs> and also flying Great place. horrible, horrible airplanes. Um, so this is going to be a very uh, interesting, intense uh, game. Uh, but in order to kind of get into everything and get super creative, uh, I brought I brought some friends here that I trust. But uh, even then, um, we're going to be using what's called the X card rule, where if anything gets too serious or if anything is too much, um, they can just type it to me or just say it to the group, like, listen, can we X this out? And, and we'll work around it. Um, you don't have to explain why either. Uh, it just, you know, just comfort is and security is the most important thing. So, absolutely. We all do. We all agree like with that, planes, friends. So can we not have absolutely. planes in this campaign? Yeah, yeah. definitely. Uh, no, there has to be planes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You didn't tell me this. What the hell, Eric? <laughs> yeah, this isn't what I signed up for. Also, <laughs> fear of flying. Trust. Yeah. Have you right. met me? Uh, I know it might be. It might be misguided, but it is. It is. <laughs> Um, so I will be the GM of this game, and this game is a Powered by the Apocalypse world game, which means I will be mostly just asking questions, trying to play to see what happens, and being a fan of the players, and giving the fiction uh, some verisimilitude, some some actual like uh, crunch. So uh, I have to honor uh, the fiction. Um, mm -hmm. That will be my primary duty. Uh, so that. With that being said for me, uh, how about let's just go around the little digital round table here and describe who we are, uh, and maybe talk about a little bit about your character, maybe what uh, what their name is, uh, what kind of role you're playing, maybe what that means, uh, if you're going to be a pilot or a navigator, uh, where you come from, that kind of stuff. Uh, let's And let's start with uh, Fake Alex. Hi, I'm Fake Alex Blue on uh, Twitch and Twitter, and um, yeah, I'm playing Maria and she is a sparrow and she's a dreamer so I think really uh, she's like she's an intellectual and her mind is elsewhere she's caught up in her thoughts quite a lot um, and she has a sort of a flexible attitude towards the truth um, did you want me to go into any more detail about my character or uh, yeah how about um, give us a little bit where she came from maybe where she learned to fly Okay, all right. Um, so, I imagine the first time you see Maria, like, uh, we fade in, and um, she's crouched over a desk, um, dark hair, and it's perhaps not as, it's not as curly as would be the, the typical style for um, someone of the period. A, yeah, you know. a, yeah, natural born Soviet era woman. Yeah, exactly. Sure. Um, um, and... I wouldn't, you know, like I wouldn't say that she had a face that only a mother could love, but perhaps other people would. She's kind of got um, a weak chin and maybe sunken, sunken eyes, sort of pale, pale complexion. She doesn't look healthy and, and beautiful in the in the sort of classical, stereotypical expectations of the word. Um, she's crouched over a desk and she's sort of looking through a, a textbook and writing uh, writing answers, um, and it's. Uh, at the Odzeni Kidzegrad Machine Building Institute and this um, a young gentleman walks in and, and she looks up um, to trying to meet his gaze mm -hmm. uh, and he waves and for half a second it's as if she's about to wave back and then she realizes that he's not actually waving at her he's waving at someone behind her he's Aww. waving at uh, <laughs> Christina or didn't realize you were playing as me <laughs> and um, then maybe maybe we sort of Too cut real. to her in the cockpit of a of a plane, small like uh, crop duster type plane, um, and she's learning to fly at a woman's aviation uh, club. club. 
Yeah, okay, something cool. Something like that. So, uh, uh, my question for you would be, uh, what would your character be doing if the war wasn't going on and if they if, if they didn't let you fly? She'd, she'd be an engineer. Um, I think she would be, like, she would have continued at the uh, Machine Building Institute mm -hmm. um, and she would be designing, uh, like, Machinery and yeah, engineering and stuff. Yeah, I, I don't know. Cool about that stuff. But yeah, yeah, that's no, fine. Okay, awesome. Cool. So uh, next around the table cool. would be Adam slash Chuckster Thomas, and uh, tell us about who you are and, and your character and stuff. Of course. Uh, so hey everybody, my name is Adam. Um, Twitch and everything. I go by Tuckster Thomas. I stream stuff. I've been appearing on everyone else's streams a lot and not doing my own stuff, but that sh should hopefully be changing soon because I want to do more. Um, I shall be playing Sarah Rabinovich, a junior lieutenant uh, who is a navigator. Her nature is an owl, and uh, the from the book it's a uh, owls are quiet and, uh, and observant, uh, happy to watch and wait. Um, can kind of go two like a few different ways, and the way I went with Sarah is she's very uh, smart, quiet, uh, protective. She wants to try to prevent anything from else from getting hurt uh, be proactive about things and so fitting with that the role I took is protector and so I repair things I try to protect people um, navigate to the best of my abilities um, her uniform is tattered kind of patchworked out of various uh, other fabrics and things that she found just from damage and such because she's been sh her their, her plane's been shot at a lot and she's taken a few hits uh, but she's weathered through it uh, her body is small so she's fairly short pretty skinny not uh, not not yeah there's another choice of fragile which I didn't take so she's small but not not frail not yeah not frail okay. uh, uh, she's an ex uh, the I chose expressive for her face like she has uh, l large eyes um she wears her emotions very plainly. I, I was describing her earlier and said she'd be very bad at poker. <laughs> um, she's from uh, Vladivostok in the east, uh, which yeah, Eric was saying is kind of like a military base. So, um, she learned to fly from her grandfather, who uh, flew in the First Great War. Um, he taught her all about like uh, navigating and kind of the basics of, of how planes work. And then she signed right up for flight training because she's patriotic and wants to help support the motherland so you were and it seems like you are so patriotic um that something kind of bad happened and in your personal life where uh where this sort of affected things so indeed uh whose funeral did you miss by volunteering for flight training uh my brother yuli he was involved in some gang stuff back in vladivostok and he got shot and killed uh basically oh. Like, like the day after she signed up and was about ready to go to flight training he died and the funeral was right after she left for flight training so she missed that and had Ooh. to leave leave that all behind who do you write home to? Uh, my grandfather her dedushka okay dedushka mm -hmm. nice great uh, moving along then would be next up Sterling hello how are uh, you? I'm good um I'm Sterling, or the first Sterling, uh, here on Twitch and Twitter. I don't do anything other than tweet my own personal thoughts. Um, I'll be playing uh, Vera. Uh, she's a raven, and her role is um, zealot. Yes. So, how did Vera get into flying? Um, her father used to own the family crop duster. Mm-hmm. Like it, his father had it, and they have it, and uh, that's how she used to learn how to fly it because they didn't have any um, eldest sons, so she kind of turned into that. Oh, okay. So, yeah, so kind of like the the son that your family never had. Okay, and yeah. you said you're from a so then you're from a farming town, right? Where? Yes. Uh, in in Siberia. In Siberia. Oh man, so like really, really out there. Oh. Okay. Uh. For the life of me, I can't pronounce the town name. Oh, don't worry about it. I know exactly what you're talking about. I saw that name as well. Uh, <laughs> just, it's Siberia. We just call it Siberia Town. It's, it's, it's all weird. one big place. Yeah. 
Um, so yeah. Okay. Um, so then, uh, help me out here. Uh, when has your sexuality gotten you out of trouble? Oh. Um, she she needed supplies for her um, plane. Mm -hmm. And she was meant to fly in the morning, but they discovered some sort of engine problem. And yeah. uh, she she had to sleep with like the, the quartermaster, basically, to get the parts to repair. Oh, and, you uh, mean uh, the the man in the 4th Army Air Logistics and Supply Commissariat? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Good to know. Anything for the motherland. <laughs> okay. No problem. Um, all right. Thanks, man. Uh, and last but not least is uh, Gravia slash J. Uh, go ahead, Stalin. Oh, boy, I get to follow up the people who were prepared and smart. <laughs> okay, um, the part that I can't fuck up. I'm Jay, also known as Seductive Stalin. I stream randomly. Uh, schedules aren't my thing, which is weird that I'm playing with Eric. Yeah, <laughs> schedules. <laughs> kind of like schedules a little bit. I, I noticed it. Uh, I'm playing as uh, Gavria uh, Kalashnikova. Uh, most people just refer to her lovingly as uh, Suka. Um, hey, it, it's true. Um, she's obviously a lady. Um, she has a very she has a flashy uniform, but not flashy and like she bedazzled it or anything. She's flashy uniform because it's been torn to shreds and singed before. Yeah, and like as opposed to it looking tattered, it looks like almost like it was purposely designed to look like that at this yeah. point. It's like the ripped jeans of Aviator. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Like right. you. She had to pay extra <laughs> to get all these rips. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. These these jeans were at least three hundred dollars. That's all I'm saying. Oh, that's awesome. Um, <laughs> loving it. Yeah, she has a very she has a very tough body. Not like it doesn't look like she lifts necessarily, and she definitely skips leg day. But um, she's covered in scars and like burn marks and just like not like where fifty percent of her body is burned, but she has like scars on her face, neck, arms, legs, chest. Like it, it's very obvious just looking at her that she's been in her fair share of crashes, I would say, but keeps getting up and out of them. Uh, she has laughing eyes. Uh, she always naturally looks very happy, even like like missing an arm, she would naturally still look like she's having a good time, uh, sort of thing. Yeah. So like you, you always seem to have a um, a smile on your face. So not necessarily always a smile on her face because most of the time you can't see her face because yeah. there's something blocking the mouth, be it vodka or a mask or cigarette, vodka, cigarette or yeah. vodka. Love it. Um, there's a theme. Okay. Um, <laughs> she comes. She comes from Moscow because I don't know any of the other places' names. And, uh, <laughs> and that's the Moscow. only thing you can pronounce. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I that's, know Moscow. That's uh, totally fine. How did so? I, I almost pronounced it Moscow just to just to mess with you. How did? So I want to know how did how did uh, Gravela um, get into flying? Man, how did she get into flying? That's a great question, Eric, and I'm glad that you asked it <laughs> because I'm well prepared to have an answer for this question. Now you see. No, I think I'm well think, prepared because I need to make yeah. Soviet great again because we're yeah. losing and we're winners. Hey, hey, Stalin! <laughs> I'm all about it. I'm all about it. This is my game. This game has my name in it, literally. So yeah. I, that's one of the reasons why I, I, not only am I uh, a good friend of you and we never get to play, I'm really actually excited because you kind of like history and stuff like that. So awesome. Um, yeah. So, um, but not dodging the question, not not avoiding the question here. What, what, what? question? You asked the question. <laughs> <laughs> no. So, um, so tell tell us how did how did Gravilla learn to fly? The most common uh, ways people learn to fly were either uh, aviation schools or like clubs, or you were a crop duster. Or maybe you were just thrown in there in the army? Like somehow, like someone tapped you to do it? Eric, come on. Do you really think I was part of a fancy smancy club? Uh, <laughs> probably not. No, no <laughs> not. Um, I honestly think that maybe she... Like, she's not been technically trained. The way she flies is very obvious that she has not been technically trained. She flies on her guts alone. So I think that maybe she worked on a farm, but she was never asked to do the crop duster. She just one day was like, eh. I'm going to do this. Yeah. She saw a crop duster and said, literally how hard can okay. I do it? An old man does <laughs> so, this. I can yeah. do this. And you pretty, so that means you pretty much slept through your training things and just 
go Watch off our, off what you know. training yeah. things? Yeah. Oh, I should have set an alarm. Ugh. So everyone, yeah. <laughs> so the way the way the one shot will work is that uh, we we're going to start about eight months or so from like you guys graduating training. Um, we've already been through du uh, one duty station in Ukraine, which you kind of saw the absolute uh, clusterfuck, if you will. Um, uh, that that is war. Uh, you guys basically were on a Ukrainian farm. That's it. Like that was the airfield was just a farm. Um, it was rocky and stuff. You slept in some just military tents. Uh, supplies were always in and out. Things were always missing. Um, and you guys actually did pretty well despite uh, everyone pulling back and, and Russia ultimately ceding ground to the Germans. Um, and so where we're going to begin is in a place called, um, how do you pronounce it? Uh, Push, uh, Pashkovska. And uh, Pashkovska is, is over in the, uh, near the Black Sea. So you're actually going to be around some sort of like water and that kind of stuff. Uh, so six months have passed since that Ukrainian clusterfuck. And from a hastily converted civilian airfield here in Pashkovska, you are supporting the Black Sea fleet in the battle for the Caucasus. The Germans are pushing hard, but you are pushing harder. Uh, you are sharing the field with the celebrated and all-male 218th Fighter Regiment, who have requisitioned everything of utility and value, leaving you with the scraps. So, now, uh, Pashkov... Uh, Pashkov... Uh, I can't say that. Uh, Pashkovska? I should have pronounced it before. Uh, Pashkovska uh, is mm -hmm. quite close to the city of Krasnodar, which is the linchpin in the German plans for seizing the Caucasus. Uh, you should expect many of your missions to be flown very, very close to home. Uh, the supply station... Uh, it, the supply situation in this area is, is pretty adequate, especially compared to Ukraine, because there's actually rail lines coming to this, uh, especially near like near the city pretty regularly. So uh, trucks and everything would be able to uh, provide stuff to the airfield. Um, so you don't have to worry that much about um, just complete scarcity. Now you have to worry more about just bureaucratic nightmare mixing up things. Um, cool. So we're going to actually now begin play um, in sort of in media res. So uh, the, the screen turns on, uh, fades, fades from black into a night sky, partially cloudy, and uh, you hear the droning of the, uh, of the planes, um, the PL2s, uh, the, these sort of like wooden and, and canvas biplanes. Um, we are currently uh, looking at one plane sort of like come up from, from below off camera, and we see that it has in it um, one of our starting characters and one of the NPCs. Uh, so it is a plane, and we see the tail of it says uh, number 517. Um, we see uh, Sarah looking over um, a map, sort of like mm -hmm. with like a flashlight, kind of like revealing um, what's going on here. And uh, we say, and, and like the little like brackets underneath the, um, or like so sort of like where the subtitles would go, uh, says, uh, Caucasus, uh, 1943, um, somewhere near the Black Sea. And from there, um, we're clearly on like a, a mission, a, a night mission of some kind, um, heading out to do a bombing run. Um, so with that, um, uh, Sarah, go ahead and give me a wayfinding roll. Of course. Sure. All right, we're gonna do a roll. I'm not gonna do my thing, so yeah, I'll do the roll. Seven, okay. Okay, uh, so um, you're going to be able to make it to the target. Uh, you're able mm -hmm. to lead your squad there, but it's not the best way to do it. Oh, um, it's not It's not all ideal here. Um, so looking at the roll 20 here. Um, These choices are so bad. Yeah, you have to choose one of the consequences. <laughs> These choices are so uh, terrible. And for, for our viewers, yeah, for our viewers, uh, it's your plane suffers a mechanical failure. Um, another one is that you are spotted and they're waiting for you, which triggers enemy fire, or your stress and bang around. Um, I'll say our plane suffers a mechanical failure. Okay. Uh, okay, got it. Um, so it seems like uh, your plane... Uh, you, you guide you guide Xenia and in return uh, the two other planes near you um, 
in the direct location of the uh, the German uh, position near the rail junction, and um, about halfway, like to the location, you your plane starts to uh, freeze over, uh, like the um, like the altimeter gauges and stuff like that, um, leading to you to basically have to dead reckon uh, your your way back to uh, back to to base. You're you're not going to be able to rely on your map. Um, along with the altimeter and your speed and directions for that. Uh, basically, you see that the like your gauges start to go like fluttering, and and then they just go down to zero while you're Shit. mid-flight, which uh-huh. basically means you have to be doing this uh, by by just luck and knowledge alone. Okay, mm-hmm. so um, yep. so you guys start to get over the target. Uh, the target here is uh, a, a rail junction. Um, with a bunch of like just German troops kind of massing around, um, you see like spotlights going through the air, and um, at that moment, um, you guys know you're ready to begin your uh, descent. Mm-hmm. And the way this happens is that one at a time, your guys' planes will uh, cut your engines and basically like cruise and dive bomb mm-hmm. over, and then start your engines again, and um, and and cruise off over mm-hmm. it. So um, the fact yeah. that you cut your <laughs> engines makes you silent. Um, as as you cru- careen down, which gives you the uh, that nickname of night witches that the Germans give you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, in chat, DMFTW, cue yeah. some unsavory language. That's and that's def- I don't know Russian swear words, but Sarah is definitely just silently cursing as she's like tapping the gauges and it's like fuck, shit, crap, fuck. Yeah, and just, suka. Like, just to, like, say suka a lot. <laughs> yeah. Like every every now and again, when you bash the the gauges, like the gauges come back on and then they yeah. like, turn off again. Like there's clearly some sort of like faulty sensor or wiring. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so immediately she like flips to the back of the map around and it starts writing things down like what she remembers the fuel was at, what she remembers certain yeah. things were at, and just trying to like memorize just like, okay, so if we do this for another five minutes, we'll be here. Just like immediately trying to do it like everything perfectly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Okay. So then we're gonna be leading into the attack run. Um, so Xenia, um, so this plane 517 is sort of like the lead plane for this mission. So that's your plane, which that means you will be mm-hmm. doing the attack run. Uh, could you go ahead and do me a favor and roll uh, the attack run for your pilot, uh, Xenia? Okay. Uh, this would be rolling with guts, so do a guts plus one. Okay. And there's like one thing I can do, and I can't do it. Ooh. Oh my god. All right, um, so uh, perhaps you're okay. Um, so your plane's definitely not doing well at all. Not at all. <laughs> Over no. Um, what happens? So you you get like right at the moment when you want to start your attack run, um, you get just serendipitously uh, a spotlight like shown in your direction, which then you cue the alarms going. Um, at this moment, at this moment, um, you know that you have uh, like 30 seconds, if that, uh, before the guns open fire. Uh, what you can do is you can waste some fuel and come around at a different attack vector, um, tempting fate, or you have to abort your attack, oh, or man. or or suffer um, uh, compl- like enemy fire. So, um, if you tempt fate, you can you can certainly go in, uh, knowing this, and try to maybe hit the spotlight. Um, you could uh, waste fuel to come around to get an attack vector, or or just just scrub the scrub your attack. How far um, away are Maria and Vera? Uh, Maria and Vera, you guys are in like a holding pattern. Um, so what happens is you guys uh, two two of your planes. Uh, stay above, and then one goes down and attacks, and then another one comes down at a different time. Uh, so, like, not everybody gets shot up at the same time or anything like that. Okay, so we've um, seen this, but we're probably yeah. too far away to be much help. Exactly. Well, there's nothing you can do against a spotlight, like the spot, because you guys aren't oh. you aren't like, you aren't over. You're still like approaching or like you're hanging out near the attack zone, because then when you make your descent, you and you and you okay. cruise off. Uh, so they they the spotlight has only seen um, uh, Zenya and Sarah's plane. You guys are still high above in the clouds. Like they've been starting to begin their descent down, and now mm-hmm. they have to make the moment of: do they abort? Uh, do they go anyways, or do they um, uh, try to waste fuel and 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 attack a different time? 
Um, I'll say we're. Uh, I guess we're gonna like do the, the waste some fuel, like turn up, turn, turn the engines back on, go around and try a different vector. Okay, cool. Um, that's you. You absolutely know that that's um, based on your calculations from your hand. Is that you're going to be uh, returning home on fuel uh, fumes? Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, then uh, with that. Uh, we're going to hold off on you as you try to circle around again. Um, mm -hmm. So everyone else. So we see uh, plane 701 can, uh, holding uh, Vera and uh, Maria. Um, you guys see that your your lead plane um, gets lit up uh, by a spotlight and immediately proceeds to just like bail away and, and like peel off and like gain altitude again, uh, going back up into like sort of like the circle um, to, to attack again, meaning that That's someone else is going to be up. Yeah, you know, you, this is your lead plane, right? Like these, this yeah. is your this is your section leader. Lead plane is coward. Um, so the next up uh, would be uh, plane seven hundred one. So Vera and and Maria. Um, so Vera, uh, go ahead and do an attack run for us. Okay. Just don't roll a three. So that's this an attack run is roll plus guts. Thumbs up. Yeah. Uh, do you have regard, by the way, for your plane? No. Okay. I have regard for for Sarah. I okay. Pity her. Got it. Um, so when you roll um, regard, if you have your plane, you can add plus one to these types of rolls. Okay. So uh, you get a ten. So your your payload connects uh, perfectly. So how about you describe for us what happens uh, when you? Um, how are you able to avoid enemy fire? Um, and, and detection, and, and how was your payload able to hit the rail depot? Um, I think because um, Sarah got spotted, mm -hmm. all the spotlights kind of went to her plane. Yeah. So I took advantage of that and came around like the side and then bombed them. Awesome. Awesome. So, um, yeah, so while the spotlights are like looking in directions of, of, of Xenia's plane, and Xenia and, and Sarah's plane, um, you were able to, uh, yeah, just like just swoop in there and um, get a direct hit on this rail depot. Um, like half of it just gets like completely, like just lit up in that orangey glow of explosions. You, um, the light from the explosion, uh, you see dozens and and like maybe like hundreds of of people, kind of like just like ants in the darkness, just just scattering around, um, looking for like water and that kind of stuff. You see like some like trucks kind of like moving around now. Um, the base is on uh, alert. Uh, that they know they're under attack, but now the, the spotlights sort of like reset from looking for her and start to look for you. Um, so next up would be the uh, third plane, uh, six sixty, piloted by Stalin. Gavila. Yeah. So um, no questions even asked. The second that lead plane starts pulling away, I'm going in for an attack. Okay. Like I'm probably breaking formation. Hmm. Or something. Oh, so you're following up, like, oh, okay, so, um, like, like the, right the, on the dovetails, like, like, yeah, right on the dovetails of, um, of Sterling's, of, of Vera's plane. Yeah, no, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm probably getting too low. Like, yeah. okay. I'm probably coming in and I'm going straight for, like, if I see a flak cannon, bam, that's my target. Yeah, attack run. Yep, mm -hmm. absolutely. See, there's very few things I can do, but you know what? <laughs> this is what I can do. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Um, so uh, your attack run is a hit, but you suffer consequences. Yeah. Um, I do. Go ahead and choose uh, two of these four. Uh, the damage oh, to the target wait. is. What? I have a regard with my plan, so that's a ten. Oh, that is a ten. Perfect. That's why nice. you have a regard. Boom. Nice. Love my baby. Awesome. Nice. So, um, yeah, piloted I think... by Stalin, not yeah. piloted by my character. Z so I think uh, <laughs> Zenya. I think I think Xenia and Sarah, you see the um, you you see plane six sixty, you see you see Gravilla's plane, um, like kind of defy orders, and sort of just follow in like immediately like dovetailing off of um, mm -hmm. of seven hundred one's attack run, which is probably like it, it allows you to be even more successful because you're basically able to do like a one two punch, but it's yeah. extremely risky because if the right, first yeah. plane got lit up, you're losing both planes basically, mm -hmm. like you are you. Two planes will suffer consequences. Yeah. Immediately um, when she sees that, like Sarah's just like, "What the hell is she doing?" And then 
Oh, yeah. okay. Uh, and then this might and actually then it work out. My cock yeah. and it's just me shaking my head, going, "I am going to be in trouble." Yeah, and <laughs> and then like we see you like uh, your engine turns on again, and you, know, you start like gaining altitude away, and like behind <laughs> you is just like this huge explosion, like like double the size of the initial explosion. Nice. Uh, like you clearly hit like the ammunition like, yes. depot part of the of the rail station. See, Sophia, um, as long as you have results, you're not in trouble. Yeah, it it just explodes in in a firework, um, <laughs> you know. Uh, of just like just shells and 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 such, making like the sort of like that spark uh, sparkler kind of explosion stuff as things like cur- like f- like a firework kind of um, weeping willow kind of effect of explosion stuff. Awesome. Um, great. Uh, so you guys uh, you guys hit this target like spot on perfectly. Um, you see uh, as you as you guys return back to formation, you see like the next round uh, of planes since you are you are one of um, four sections that are. are going to be doing attack runs you just guys were the first um you see that you guys have done very very well and you guys are getting ready to return home um to base success, uh, successfully wait does the uh, oh wait no 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 oh, wait. Around again? yeah that's right uh Zenya, you need to go again oh we do gotcha yeah because you guys were you guys were returning back into the order uh-huh all right so we need to do another attack run yes Right. Um, no. You realize, like, your attack run is, like, interfering with the next plane's attack run. <laughs> like, they see you're like, sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Our bad, sorry. Yeah. You're absolutely. in the right lane, but you have your left blinker on. You're like, <laughs> I gotta take, I'm so sorry. Yeah. I'm so sorry. I, I, I gotta I gotta get that way. I'm so sh- sorry. Yeah, they, they, like, see, like, yeah, they're getting ready to do their attack run, and then they see you come in from, like, a different angle, and they, like, start going back, and they're like, oh, what the fuck, right? Shit, sorry. Yeah, so go in. We're, yeah, so attack run. Either way, we're probably gonna hear hear crap about this later on. All right, so that's a that's a pl- that's uh, a plus nine. one from Zenya, right? Uh, yes. All right, so that's actually a nine, but yeah, still same result. Okay. Um, well, you uh, it's a hit, but you have to choose some consequences here. Uh-huh. Uh huh. The damage to the target is not significant, and it's your fault. Um, you have to fly through a storm of flak. Um, a plane in your section is damaged. It's my choice. Um, or you and your fellow airwoman are marked. Um, hmm. You have to choose two consequences. I choose two? Yes. <laughs> this game is mean. Yep. <laughs> Even a partial in the game treats it like it's a fail. <laughs> no, we still hit it, you know, just... <laughs> you hit it, um, All right, so... You do not want to go back to base with your full payload still carrying your full payload. You need to drop those bombs. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, there, um, there's no question. They dropped the bombs. It's just was it a was it a hit or was it a partial? Yeah. Do we um, have parachutes? No. Okay. I think I'm going to. You fly too low for them. You and your fellow airwoman are marked, okay. and a plane in your section is damaged. GM's choice. Oh <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. Uh, <laughs> fictionally, that would have that would be your plane. Oh okay. Um. So I think. I think you uh, realize coming back um, back home from a, a third punch that was like extremely successful. Um, you probably like hit like the railroad part. So instead of like just the depot, you just like destroy like this train where it's like you know like each car gotcha. like sequentially just starts exploding, uh, like a, like a chain reaction, like boom, and then like boom, boom, and like it's like going down the cars um, for like five or six cars or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but you realize that um, it's not just your altimeter and your your mechanics. It's 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 actually it's the damage to your your engine or or maintenance issues to your engine are are worse than you thought. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, basically, you're going to require a uh, a wheels down um, before you even get to awesome. base. Like you're not going to be able to make it back to base. You're going to be able to make it back like three quarters of the way. Okay. So people are going to have to get your um, someone have to go out there and basically bring a truck and get your plane. <laughs> awesome. Do not worry, I do it all the time. Very nice. <laughs> tell t- tell Igor you, we we know so, you. Then we will get we will get discount. Yep. <laughs> uh, so you guys, uh, so uh, Zenia's plane. Um, you see, you see, Zenia is very stressed out about this. She's like. Uh, she's just cursing. Oh, Sarah so, is too. Yeah, and like you guys are both like, f- like you know, like we're gonna have to answer to this, um, mm-hmm. losing. Like we should not be um, returning. Like we need to return to base. Like this is something that uh, you know, strong, firm Soviet airwomen. Uh, you know, this is not something that happens to them. Mm-hmm. So, 
with that being said, uh, we see the other two planes. So we see Vera and Gravilla. Um, you guys see that their plane, like the lead plane, is struggling. It's 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 sort of doing like that, like rising and falling, like sort of like yeah. dipping. Like it's it's having it's having issues. Because it's flying on fumes, right? As well, exactly. As well as not having, uh -huh. yeah, like <laughs> instruments. Ooh. Yeah. It's... But when you crash, it won't be a fiery explosion. So That's there's true. that. <laughs> yep. You gotta use the happy thinking. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm just like shaking my head and saying I knew she wasn't ready for this. Do I see the? Do I like? Is there a specific gun that's putting them under more fire? Um, no, uh, this isn't this isn't a gun that's doing it. Their fire. It's it's actually just the just, plane. Yeah. The plane is just poop. Oh, well, in that case, I think I go like. Yeah, the airplanes are straight up fucked. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, basically, so, so, yeah, um, we're, we're already, we're already, like, yeah. we, we've already left the place. It's just we're flying back, and we're just like, eh. Basically, <laughs> basically, your engine's fuel pump and carburetor just just yeah. straight up quit. They're just oh, wait, they're, yeah, they yeah. just they're just taking a break. So yeah, your your plane cannot fuel inject. So it, you're not doing anything. Your engine is just right, sitting yeah. there doing nothing. So yeah, we're we're, we're we, limping back essentially. Yeah, like it it, it cuts out, and then they will like try to go again, and it, it you you hear the sound of the pistons misfiring, like like mm -hmm. that pop sound, and which is not good at all. And so like your 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 propeller will like occasionally start rotating for like thirty seconds or so, and then it like pops and stops, and so like you're you're gradually just going down. Yeah. Um. And there's like nothing, and there's nothing we can even do in that situation either. We're just pulling back and just hoping we stay up long enough to find somewhere to land. Yep. So you're going to be triggering a wheels down move on your uh -huh. return. Uh, yeah. But, but before Sarah's you do that, all of like her, her paper and pencils are on like on the floor of the plane. She just like whatever. I'm not sure what controls the navigator has, but whatever whatever she has, she's just trying things and just trying to keep it, trying to keep oh. the plane the plane up. Yeah. Thankfully, the trees and stuff are. are it's not like you're not. You're not going to be in like a thick forest or whatever, like near the Caucasus and here it's mostly just kind of like fields, like more like yeah. farm fields and stuff like that. Um, but you are going to have to trigger wheels down. But before awesome. you do that, um, Vera and Gravilla, like what do you think when you when you see their plane doing this and struggling? I'm thankful for my plane. Uh, <laughs> I, I literally, I like... pat my plane like, uh, Zonia, <laughs> you are a good girl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it hums yeah. steady, man. Uh, your plane, your plane is super reliable. Well, so that's my question. Do we all have to retreat because they're retreating? No, yeah, or... I mean, you guys are returning back from your mission. Like your missions were successful this evening. Oh, uh, I was, I was gonna say, because like if in that case I just turn around and like, you know, bottle the I mean, but you, you see their planes not going to make right. it, right? Uh, like um, like I, this, your lead plane isn't going to return. I'm gonna come up near them, like actually, yeah. like trying not to. Be yeah. normal in character, and I'm gonna give them the hand signals for "Don't worry, I'll follow you." So when you crash, I can pick you up. Yeah, no, that's that's perfect. Um, I, I gave you the hand signal for "I'm really good at crash landings." Don't even worry. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so Vera, I'm yeah, best at this. So basically, when you have to go there and debrief, you can you, <laughs> like you're 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 volunteering to be like, I will let them know of your fate, right? <laughs> like, no, you're no, not no, they're I'm not dead, the right? Like you're, you're like I'm you're gonna get the corpses. That's what yeah. I'm doing. Okay, <laughs> I'm the hermit. Thanks. Thanks. Right. Uh, <laughs> Vera, Vera and Maria, is there anything you wanted to add to that? Uh, as as you see your lead plane struggling, I'm making notes. I've got like I don't know how, but like I'm flying and I'm writing down like they did this wrong. Uh, oh. Oh. He knows to report a mental a mental check a checklist yeah. in your head. Uh -huh. Are you are you saying anything while you're doing that? I mean, uh, we've got this really crude kind of communications rig between us, don't yeah. we? Yeah, you and you um, and your navigator are able to talk to each other. Yeah, I'm like, um, they weren't ready. What were they doing? Going around for another attack? They've wasted fuel. Yeah. Yep, <laughs> it's true. Look, try to relax. We're almost back. You just, just in fact, let me take the controls. You just get some sleep. It's been a long night. Yeah. So, um, everybody makes it back except for. Uh, Zenya and Sarah's plane, which have to trigger wheels down somewhere in the Caucasus on the way back. Uh, you can do it. I believe in you. Okay, so that's with skill. I actually have a plus um, one to skill. Yes. Uh, this would be um, this uh, this would be Zenya's role, and Zenya also has a plus one because she's the pilot. Okay. okay so yeah, just yeah, same, yeah. whatever this is. Yeah. Nice. So yeah, you guys are able to land the plane down safely. Um, just everything. I think, like, probably when your plane is, like, 
super fucked and it, it, it's like and you guys are coming down at like yeah. probably at like the last minute it feels like like your guardian angel kind of kicks in and the plane kind of uh-huh. like returns to normalcy for just like 30 seconds before you mm-hmm. land and you're able to just guide it in there almost miraculously yeah um, i mean unlike modern aircraft these were actually aerodynamic so you exactly can, like, the engine yeah. and glide them right? exactly no like that's that's the reason why you guys are so effective mm-hmm. at bombing is that because they are gliders essentially um, right. They're just gliders that can propel themselves a little further. Um, so, yeah, by the time your engine kicks in, it just it just smooths the landing even better than a glider mm-hmm. could, right? So, yeah, you guys you guys land um, perfectly. There's no damage to your plane. None mm-hmm. of you guys are hurt, um, or nothing puts you in any sort of danger. You basically like land in a uh, like a cow field. Yeah. And so, like, you're just like surrounded by just like these awkward looking cows. Like they like they like, like they see your plane coming in like like from the distance and you see them like kind of scattering away to the other side of it and then you land and then they like start looking at you curiously like meh, meh. how far away from base are they? Um, navigator. Um, you would probably know. You are probably uh twenty twenty or so kilometers away. So oh, sh- would it be? This is an out of character question because in character yeah. I would know this of course because I'm stupid. Mm-hmm. Um. Should I pick them up or should I just land and be like, yeah, they crashed in a cow field? Um, you, they would have to sit in your plane. Um, it's possible you could land, you could try to land there like wheels down. Um, no, I can just do it. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> You're um, forgetting. I just, do <laughs> yeah, do you want to? Do you want to pick them up? Well, no, the question is, is it a good thing if I pick it up or is it a bad thing? What, and abandon their plane? I'm fine with that. That's a very bad thing. Because I don't care. It's a very Again, bad thing. As, uh, as, as chat aptly put out, if they die, I just get a promotion. <laughs> um, if um, they left their that plane, just opens up lead spot. Look, uh, out of character, the answer would be it depends on what your character thinks it is. Uh, I <laughs> like, is, is this a good move? Like, I don't know. Like, this is this is is this is this is your gut reaction, right? Like, your your plane just went down. At the I, very, I think at your the very training. Least I'm what I would off. say is your your training says to leave them there. Your training is your duty is to return to base. But we yeah. know that Gavrila wasn't paying attention. I, to yeah, absolutely. You, yeah, exactly. Like we know you weren't paying attention, uh, and you do whatever you want. So, like, what do you do? I'm gonna put the plane down in the cow pen. <laughs> 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 but here's the question, Eric. Yeah. Is it even remotely possible to land there? As someone just landed there, I'm gonna say yes. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I just land the plan. I don't even have to roll. I just do it. Yes, because um, so can we even fit in their plane? I yeah, got duct, yeah, I got duct tape and two wings. <laughs> no, I think I think it would be crowded. Um, it would be awkward. Yeah. We can leave Sophia. She doesn't talk. But you can you can you can you can both kind of squeeze into the um, the controls and everything. But okay. it it will be it will be a very weird awkward flight home. I'm 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 doing this for also a very selfish reason that I'll explain later. But <laughs> I put yeah I put the plane down like it's like a perfect landing. Yeah, just somehow which is There's cool no yeah, just, it like, should have been a perfect like a slap landing. in the face to our like how bad we're doing. Yeah. I like, parallel mm. park the plane. Yeah, no, you yeah, yeah you, exactly right. You parallel park the plane. Um, and you you kind of like when you land and pull up next to them, you see like Xenia like kicking like her plane, being like piece of shit, like like yeah. you know. Hey, treat plane better. Maybe that is why plane breaks apart. <laughs> so rude. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, well, and yeah. use brain. If you kick plane, is plane in mint condition or is plane now have boot hole? <laughs> no, uh, it, the, it just doesn't do any actual damage to the plane. Right. I, yeah. yeah. I, um, I know, but are you sassing your superior officer? Oh, you yeah. better oh. believe it. Yeah. Is my superior yeah, officer she, in a position she looks at where you, she can't do anything? Well, um, yeah, I think she looks at you and she's like, all right. She's like, take me home. We'll deal with this later. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, you you, win, you have the upper hand right now. Like, yeah, you, you yeah. basically you get to do plane ride to Smug City for, for the next hour, right? Like, yeah, you are. No, I just, just, just remember <laughs> when you try to report to me who is the one who went down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, also, also, when we get to airfield, you're in charge of landing it. I'm a little iffy on how to land plane. <laughs> <laughs> After you just perfectly landed this plane? <laughs> no, 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 it's easy. I use cows to slow me down. <laughs> <laughs> there okay. are no cows on the runway. <laughs> cool. Right. Um, Runways are hard. <laughs> yeah, runways are difficult. I skipped runway. No, the problem is I skipped runway day, but I showed up to crash landing day. <laughs> 
So I'm really good at crash landing. But yeah, mm-hmm. I, know, I, I pick them up. Awesome. So I you look guys, at Sophia, and be like, Sophia, make room for people in. So- you never talk. I hate you, Sophia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, Sophia. Um, I think Sophia is probably the newest member of your squad. And she is in the worst plane to yeah. be in. I <laughs> feel so bad for her. Like, when I um, went in out of order and bombed it, she's just going, wait, but wait, and she's, like, flipping through the school yeah. book, like, you, we're not yeah. supposed to do this! Yeah. <laughs> um, in fact, do you do you actually, like, try to navigate your own plane anyways? No, God, no. Oh, okay. God, no. Oh, oh no, so no, you no. do listen to her for wayfinding. Well, okay, does wayfinding roll with guts? No. Out of character? Then yes, I absolutely listen to my navigator. <laughs> okay. So you're very much firmly that the navigator just tells you where to go and then shuts up? Yeah. No, okay. uh, no. Here's the thing. I would like her to talk more. I would like us to have family plane where everyone is enjoying time, but she does not talk because she is afraid that I'm going to spin plane over and bomb upside down. <laughs> yeah. No, you, you definitely have a sort of, like, reckless kind of... Um, Allegedly. Allegedly. They call me loose cannon. Yeah. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> Awesome. My plane is called Danger Zone. I don't know why. <laughs> awesome. But yeah, I pick them up and I, I am fly over. flight risk. I don't what. You don't know how to fly plane. <laughs> okay. Um. So you guys return home. Um. You guys are the the lead plane five seventeen is able to or uh is able, is just stuck in the in the cow field, and you guys t- uh, hitch a ride back on six sixty. Um. So you guys when you guys return back to base. Um, when you guys land, um, the mechanics and, and the section leader, or, or the squadron leader, excuse me, um, by the name of Sasha, is, is wondering where the, where the lead plane is. Um, <laughs> I, I before, Z- yeah, b- before Zenya shit. answers. Yeah, they probably freaked out just because they saw two planes coming back, like, oh, shit, we lost one. But yeah. then they saw four people getting out of one plane, like, wait a minute, yeah. how, does, how did that work out? Yeah. I just go, I just look... <laughs> At whoever's asking, and I go, that sounds like a great question for the lady who loves cows. And then I just walk off. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. Um, Sarah's just, like, beat oh, red behind Xenia, hold, like, holding her papers and stuff, and just kind of not really... She's, like, being quiet and just, like, I guess if, she, if someone specifically asks her something, she'll talk. But, yeah, like, Xenia's probably going to be doing the explanation. Um. So while you're, like, walking off... Um, Sasha is, is basically like, where the hell do you think you're going? Let's go. Debriefing. Now. Uh, I was going to debriefing. Uh, it's more like you were going to bathroom. Get fun for <laughs> debriefing. Yeah. But to, whatever. Um, so, so like, tent. Now. Um, so you guys uh, get assembled in. And she wants to know. Uh, Sasha's like, so so what happened with this plane? Like, what? why are there two left? Uh, I think Vera st- like, answers immediately. Like, uh, they crashed plane in some field. It was crashed actually it. a it was actually a cow field, and it was less of a crash and more of a very impressive landing. Is it salvageable? Yes, it's it's it, it's it's salvageable. Good. Well, then, um, here, we, and she points to like one of her aides. Um, we some, have mechanical issues. Ah, I see. I see. Um, Lost and, and, and she, she, she like Lost you see she like writes writes a note for like mechanical issues. Um, you also see the like the NKVD um aid oh, in, the, in, the, in the tent also like write down a note and, and look at you. Mm-hmm. Um, everyone's just, like okay. okay I think just... at the point yeah. where the NKVD aid is writing a note, there's just yeah. like some. I don't know. Maybe I don't know if anyone would notice it, but there's definitely an exchange of looks between the NKVD aid and Maria. Like, <laughs> they definitely make eye contact for a second, and then just okay. like look away. Yeah. Nice. Yes, Gavrio will remember that. <laughs> awesome. So, um, she's like, okay, well, uh, thank you for, very much for the debriefing. If that's all, uh, it was a successful mission, right? Ah, yes. Good. Well, but, all, um, all sources of ammunition. Between, uh, between us, though, um, we were kind of hitting a little bit of a, a supply shortage with planes. Um, it's very important that the planes return. Uh, more important even than um, a completely successful mission. Uh, she lets you guys know that for the next time. Ah, but we have both. Indeed. Uh, very well done. Um, only before... Uh, yeah, but... Uh, it, will be, it will be a complete success 
if you guys are able to get a truck out there and recover your plane before uh, the 218 realize that um, we quote unquote lost a plane. I will go find Dimitri. It, it will be taken care of. It would make my I, paperwork a lot easier. Eric, can we say that Maria marked down the location of the down plane? Yeah, um, absolutely. Um, you guys, you oh, guys yeah, saw when the plane, where too. the plane yeah. was going so down. Did Sophia, yeah, I told her too. you guys corroborated that story that it mm -hmm. went down in a field. It was totally fine. Um, it's just it's a field 20, 20 clicks out of um, out from the air base. Yeah. Um. So, my the mark that I took back when we failed. Uh, let's see, it was. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, for for our slightly successful attack run. Should I pick that now, or just kind of whenever we get around to it? No, you should pick. You should pick that now. Okay. Um. Because if it's like tell a story or something like that, that could happen in in the daytime. Okay. So. Um, I think, um, as a consequence, um, for for picking picking up, um, picking up Zenya and Sarah, I think uh, Sasha, the, the once again the um, squadron commander, um, says, "Well, since you guys are so good at picking up things, I think I think Ravia and and Sophia uh, should be the ones who um, go get the the plane." Uh, Zenya, Sarah, um, get some rest. Get some, take a shower. Um, thank you for for your time. Basically, punishing, um, making you guys. It's a it's a ploy to make you feel bad that now you have to do more work for another person. Right. Uh -huh. I was going okay. to offer to do it anyways, but that was... yeah. Okay. Yeah. The, this. I guess. What, yeah. So that. So that. That said, and then are we? We're let go after that. Yes. Okay, so the second we get outside, unless, unless I somebody the, wants to um, publicly shame a comrade, to add one to the next uh, night mission's pool, uh, I, I would. Uh, like Sarah mentioned, like stands like they botched the first run, leaked fuel everywhere. There's no fuel left in the plane. They got spotted by flak immediately. Mm. So I don't you're know calling? Why she's a navigator and the pilot. I'm like pointing to both of them going. Given. So you're throwing, yeah, you're throwing your your squadron, um, or your your section leader, uh, Zenia, a little yeah. bit under the bus, a little bit, and she's yeah. just she's just like face palming, you know, like, oh, like really, like uh, this was already a bad situation, and now you're gonna you're trying to throw dirt on me. <laughs> um, she gives you a very very wry look, like, not, not cool, not, not cool, cool, bro. Um, Sanya, Sasha will remember this. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Okay. Um, she's and she's like, I see. Hmm. And as especially the NKVD aid is like. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I think whenever I say like something bad, I look at the NKVD aid. Yeah. Like, huh? Right. Right. We're on the same yeah. page. Yeah. <laughs> the um. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm uh, released to go get the plane, right? Yeah, we're you're released to go get the yep. plane. On the way out, what? I find the both of those two. Like, maybe you're on your way to talk to me, but I grab you and I go, Just remember you are beyond with me. I expect two bottles of vodka in my footlocker before I get home. Have a good night. I'm I'm going to I'm going to help you. The hell. I'm coming to help you. I'm getting that plane back. But you get in trouble. Uh, very well. Uh, navigator is a navigator. Sophia, go rest. She looks at you weird. It's like, but, but I want to come. Fine, then come. Jeez. <laughs> there's, there's plenty of room. We turn on yeah. radio. We talk about happy, fun stories. Yeah. No, she wants. <laughs> she wants to come with you guys. She's like, I actually kind of want to come with you guys. Fine. Then you come. Very well. Um, okay. We all drive. Um. Especially after um, uh, what's her name? Sarah. You volunteer to come with you. Yeah. I immediately oh, like. I, basically, I'm like I. I this kind of I. I'm part of this failed partially because of me. So I'm going to make up for my mistake. So. That's why, yeah. but yeah, I don't really say anything. I'm just, I'm com I don't, I don't care. I'm coming with you. Yeah, uh, Zenya, Zenya has enough paperwork and and bullshit to deal with now, that she mm -hmm. does not volunteer to come. Zenya, do you wish for me to pick you up a fresh burger while I'm at your plane? She's just, you know, middle <laughs> finger. <laughs> I love you too. <laughs> <laughs> um, is there a radio in this car? No. Oh um, uh, damn it! Then I, am, then I am then I am singing uncomfortably. No, but this engine is probably like the same engine that's in your plane in the truck. 
<laughs> like you're, the reason why your planes are so um, useful is that they're, they're, they're actually gas powered and not like aviation fuel. Um, they're just simply easily um, replaceable parts. They're yeah. interchangeable with other uh, type like trucks and stuff like that. So, um, you guys uh, doing doing that mission to recover the plane uh, means you guys will be um, unable to. You will have to push yourselves during the day. So, like if you wanted to catch some rest or something like that, uh, means you're going to be limited on the amount of things you can do during the day because this, this is eating into your sleep time. Yep. And if um, you say tried to lead a bombing run while tired, would that be I don't know tempting fate? No, uh, it just means you're tired and you <laughs> suffer one harm. Oh, mm -hmm. never mind. No, uh, I don't like yep. that. Yeah, <laughs> that's less fun than my idea. Like, oh Indeed. well, in that case. Uh, also, the first <laughs> joke that's made when everyone's in the car, I go, "Well, we have two navigators, so we should get there in half the time, right?" <laughs> um, people, I think, I think, yeah, I think, I think <laughs> Sophia and I just kind of look at each other awkwardly, look back at you, and just. Uh, I don't. So, um, Sophia, <laughs> so really we're we're gonna us. cut we're gonna cut to um, to uh, I want I want to see more about like Maria and and uh, Vera at, at base, mm -hmm. but um, in the meantime, I think she's going. We're gonna cut uh, stop before the frame with a uh, with a question about um, she wants to know more about how you got uh, your medal and your reward from from the last mission or from from the previous duty station. Okay, Sarah. Oh, because oh, she wants to know I, how you became lead navigator. Basically. Oh, my medal. Yeah. So like, oh. just we're gonna we're gonna leave that that question open and then cut over to um to uh, Maria. Uh -huh. Okay. And 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 uh, Sarah. <laughs> so um you guys are done. Um you see you see your friends get into the um get into the like you know Soviet era looking truck um mm -hmm. with a giant um like tow cable and stuff on the back. Uh, and then we're going to go to um, you see you see Zenya getting ready to go off to go to like a place to go write down the the notes from the mission. Uh, what are you guys doing? Well, I think you know if it's immediately afterwards, we're we're getting rack time. Um, okay. Like it's been a long night, um, yeah, and for sure for. For Maria, anyway, like she knows that when that plane gets back, um, it's not going to be it's not going to be in flyable state, and someone's probably going to have to help repair it, and that yeah. someone's going to need to be like on their game, so they're going to need to get some sleep when they can. Mm. Um, yeah. So uh, Olga, who is the um, section's engineer, like head engineer, is mm -hmm. is just like you see her while you like walk into the rack, uh, the barracks to get some shut eye. Uh, she's just, like rubbing her eyes and just being like, "Oh, it's gonna be another long night." Wow, she has a really sore throat. <laughs> yeah, sorry, uh, dog. So, um, what did I, she say? Sorry. Sorry, uh, she's like, "Oh, it's gonna be a really long night uh, for her because she's gonna have to be staying up late to recover and and fix up this broken plane." Like, you know, after after it gets here, um, and then she's gonna have to spend all day working on it um let alone getting the rest of your guys planes good to go mm -hmm. um, don't worry i'll come and help you oh uh she looks at she looks are you are you known to help repair planes yeah think? i think so okay. like it's uh it's maria's background right she's yeah mechanically minded yeah that's what she was studying so okay definitely no she's absolutely into it okay um, with that, it's also it's 11.30, so we'll probably cut to our first break. Uh, and we'll be back in uh, about 10 minutes. Okay. Okay, guys. So thanks for okay. tuning in. Uh, see you guys in about 10 minutes.